This is the ESP32 running the blink sketch. It turns the blue LED on for one second and turns it off for one second. This is the same ESP32 but this time turning the red LED on and off based on the button state. If we add these two programs together, we can see that the blue LED is still blinking fine but the red LED is not turning on and off in sync with the button. Today we are going to learn how we can use a second endless loop in parallel to the first one. This means that they both will be running at the exact same time and the delay of one loop will not affect the other one. What is up everybody? The sky I guess. The ceiling and then the sky. Lame joke I know. Okay, let's move on. What is up everybody my name is Nasir and welcome to another video. Now you may already know that the ESP32 is a dual core microcontroller. It actually has three cores but the third one is a low power core so we are not going to use that one. So we are going to use this second core today and we are going to run our second loop on that uh, second core. Too many seconds in one sentence. We are simply going to separate these two cores, the blink and the button state and we are going to assign the button state sketch on core 0 and we are going to assign the blink sketch on core 1 and they will both run at the exact same time. To do this we have to do three simple steps. Step 1 we are going to initialize a task handle variable. This task handle is what we will be calling when we want to initialize a task, remove it, stop it, whatever we want to do with this task we need to reference it with this task 1. And that's it for step 1. Step 2 we have to go to the white setup function and we have to run this x task create pin 2 core. This function is basically initializing the task itself and it has simple parameters like the name of the function because you want to call a function to start the task. In this function we are simply specifying that which core we want to use or what is the name of the task we want to call and I have written loop 2 here you can write anything you want. Later on you are going to use this exact name to start your endless loop. Just write this code in the setup function and step 2 is done. Now for the final step all you have to do is create a function with the same name you use in the initialization part. Since I used loop2 I have made a function called void loop2 here and inside that function you have to manually set an infinite loop. Now unlike the void loop function which runs endlessly by default we have to manually make this core stuck into this infinite loop. We have to do it manually and we do this simply by writing 4 and these two brackets and that's it. So whatever you are going to write inside this loop now will run parallel to the first one to the wide loop and they will both run on different cores at the exact same time. Now my button state code is inside this infinite for loop on core 0 and my blink sketch is inside void loop on core 1. So they are on different cores and they are running at the exact same time. One of them has a delay and one doesn't. As you can see both of them are running smoothly and there is delay in the blink sketch and it is blinking the LED with one second delay and it is not affecting the button state sketch at all. We can also check and confirm that both of these programs the blink and the button state program are running on different cores and we can do this simply by using the export get core id function. So now we can see that the blink sketch is running on core 1 and the LED button state is running on core 0. So now whatever delay you are going to use in one loop will not affect the other. Hence parallel programming. Now there are a few things that you have to be careful with while using these two cores at the same time. Sometimes things can get more complex and dividing it into two cores is very hard. For example instead of turning the LED on and off with the button what if we were sending the button state to an HTTP server. We would have to check the button state and send it to the server and while it is being sent to the server there is some delay. So one core is checking the button and the other one is sending it to server. So there is delay on one and there is no delay on other. The thing is this time they are both taking the same data sensor value. The sensor value is like a shared resource between these two cores. A shared resource is when two cores are working over same data in this case the button state. We have to remember that we may have two cores but we still have one memory. Both of these cores are accessing all the data from the same place and they cannot access this all together. 
one has to wait while the other one is accessing. Take this as an example. If both of the cores try to access the memory at the same time, then the program will fall into some unnatural behavior or some error. Yeah. Another problem that can occur while using the shared resource is called a data race. In this situation, both of the cores are waiting for the other one to access the shared resource first. I insist. You first. Please. I you first. eat it! Okay. Oh. Eat it! Uh, Shut up and eat it. Yeah. To prevent this from happening, we simply use a mutex log. But this is just the beginning. All of what we did right now on two different cores could be done on one single core using threads. And threads are used to optimize the maximum capacity of the cores. You can run multiple tasks almost at the same time using threads. Basically, they use all of the possible delay and they use the delay in switching from one task to other so that they don't have to actually wait because it's like when you're sending the request to an HTTP server you could leave that task and go check the sensor value again and once the server request is sent go back and send the other request so it gets pretty complex and this is just a small chip this ESP32 and the things it can do running two cores running threads on this all of this is possible and we have just started inshallah in the upcoming videos we will show you how to use a shared resource how to synchronize data transfer how to run threads on this but we have to go slower because this could get pretty messy pretty fast and I guess that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please press the like button. And if you're new here, subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Yeah. Haha. <laughs>